Uh, now I'd like to outline how um, the state of Arizona will approach the lifting of Title 42. For the past three years, the federal government has used Title 42 as a temporary solution to a permanent problem. On May 11th, that will come to an end. As a result, Arizona communities will once again be responsible for managing the influx of migrants entering our southern border. Let me be clear. The state of Arizona stands ready to assist our border communities and NGOs in any way that we can. When I took office, I made it a priority to visit the border and meet with leaders on the ground in their communities. In the first 100 days, we visited both the Tucson and Yuma sectors, including a tour of the Mariposa Port of Entry with Secretary Mayorkas. During these trips, I heard directly from Border Patrol agents who struggled to keep staff. I heard from elected officials whose requests have gone unanswered, and I've heard from humanitarian leaders who, have, who are overworked and overwhelmed by the responsibility that's been put on their shoulders. Now, with Title 42 set to expire, I'm afraid these challenges will only get worse. And I'm afraid the federal government is unprepared to meet the demands of the expected influx. That's why today I'm announcing the state of Arizona's Title 42 preparedness approach. Our five-point approach is based on what we heard directly from these communities and is focused on public safety and humanitarian support. Additionally, our approach will use the state tools we have at our disposal to help border communities. We'll use all the state tools we have. <clears throat> Let me be clear. I will not politicize the border. I will not prioritize headlines and political stunts. I will work tire tirelessly to keep Arizonans and migrants safe and ensure a humane and orderly process. Our approach is informed by months of meaningful collaboration, hearing from partners on the ground, and tailoring our actions to their needs. As we manage a fluid situation, our state will continue with that approach. Our first point is public safety. I've directed the Arizona Department of Public Safety to assist local sheriffs and law enforcement in maintaining safety and security on Arizona highways and prevent harmful drugs like fentanyl from being brought into our state. I've also encouraged the federal government to double down on the approach outlined in Operation Blue Lotus and hope that they will continue to crack down on any and every drug trafficker who thinks they can exploit this potential humanitarian crisis for their own gain. Second is partnerships. As I have said many times, the only way out of this is through collective partnership. That's why my office has spent months developing and strengthening partnerships with NGOs, federal agencies, local governments, and tribal communities. We will rely on these relationships and the open lines of communication that have been created to monitor the situation at the border and ensure tailored action is taken where needed. To best facilitate this communication, my team is standing up a joint information command where our partners can share updates, raise concerns, and coordinate responses. Three is transportation. My administration will continue to assist with the transportation of migrants to their final destination. DEMA will assist, provide, and coordinate the best and safest mode of transportation for migrants. By doing this, we can mitigate the impact of the increased migration on our border communities. We will make sure the most cost-effective method of transportation is being used, and that there is clear coordination between sponsors and NGOs. Fourth is emergency shelter. DEMA will play a similar role in ensuring migrants are sheltered while they are awaiting transportation out of Arizona. And finally, fifth, as I have done before, I am prepared to take executive action. We will activate state resources as needed and provide access to emergency resources if deemed necessary. That includes, but is not limited to, sending additional National Guardsmen to the border. While we are prepared to take state action in any way that we can, we cannot manage this influx alone. Without much more robust action from the federal government, the current situation will only get worse. I've sent letters to President Biden and Secretary Mayorkas outlining specific actions that need to be taken. As of today, we have not received an adequate response. We will continue to relentlessly pressure the federal government until we truly get the resources we need to manage the expected influx. 